Hello friends and good afternoon. Today we are taking on a rather large task. I feel, I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little stressed about it, but I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Um, today we are going to be attempting to make some pl uh, wire, sorry. <laughs> We are going to be attempting to make some wire moss poles, which I have never done before. And I've been growing my plants on moss poles for a long time. I think that my first moss pole video went up in 2020. The moss pole. I think that I also... I will link everything below. I mean, long time. It's only been like three or four years. But um, I'm just saying that this isn't my first time that I've made a, a moss pole, but this is my first time using coated wire rather than um, like a D-shaped closed back, like pre-made moss pole that you just assemble, like the Rousseau ones that you see me use all the time, or the plastic, just like plastic mesh um, that I used to use. So I used to make moss poles very similar to the wire one that I'm going to be making today except for it was just like a firm plastic um, for the mesh which was just not strong enough like they ended up always just getting flimsy I'd have them like literally bending sometimes they were just a bit of a pain in the butt um, I like that style of moss pole like I did enjoy growing my plants that way but I just want to try to make something that just holds up a little bit better and is going to be strong and isn't gonna be like leaning over and bending and you know, I'm hoping to solve that issue. That's like my main, um, that's the main reason that I'm wanting to give this wire pole thing a go is just because, you know, obviously we've all seen people like Sydney Plant Guy and um, Plants by Melissa and um, Craig Milren. Like there's tons of people that have been um, using these wire moss pole setups and have grown just massive plants on them. So I'm really hoping that they're gonna hold up well for me and you know, just like be easy to extend. And yeah, I'm hoping that they're just gonna work out for me. I really do enjoy growing climbing plants and I know that moss poles can be such a pain in the butt. I get comments all the time of people asking like what are tips and tricks to keep your moss poles moist and stuff like that. And it honestly just comes down to it's, it's a lot of work. Like you really just do have to be consistent with them and top them up every few days, sometimes even more than that, depending on what your humidity is, what your temperature is, um, how rooted your plant is into the moss pole. Like there's so many different factors, but it really does just boil down to, they require quite a bit of maintenance, like obviously much more maintenance than a plant that is not climbing or is just on like a bamboo um, stake or something like that. So yeah, they're definitely a time investment, but I really do just enjoy seeing my plants climb and seeing them mature so much that it's worth it to me. I want all of my moss poles to eventually either be the Rousseau ones because those are my favorite closed back D-shaped poles. They're amazing and what I like about them is just that they are like thick and sturdy. They're more thick and sturdy than other ones that I've tried. So, and I like the like um, straps that open at the front. I honestly haven't had any problems with those bending on me or being flimsy at all. So I'm gonna experiment seeing how big of a plant I can get on that style of pole. I currently have my Escaletto. Um, growing fairly large on a Rousseau pole. So honestly, we'll see. Maybe I won't end up liking the wire pole. Maybe I will just still prefer the Rousseau poles. I didn't even finish what I was saying. Sorry, I'm all over the place today as usual. I either want my plants to be on Rousseau poles or wire poles. And these are the two that I'm gonna be kind of like comparing and contrasting and seeing how they work for me over a long period of time um, just to see, yeah, how is the stability for each of those options? ease of being able to extend, how long do they stay moist? Obviously, I'm sure the Rousseau ones are gonna stay more moist, but um, yeah. As I always say, this hobby is always just about like trial and error and learning and growing and changing and adapting. And that's just kind of what I'm doing today by trying out a new style of pole that I haven't done before. I just wanna see how it goes for me. And yeah, I'm very, very curious to see how my plants are going to do and i also the thing something that i like about wire poles is that there's more surface area i mean this is a pro and a con the pro is that there's more surface area for your plant to be able to adhere and you can have like perhaps more vines growing up because there's like there's a 360 degree like area that they can adhere to and go into the moss but with the um, closed back moss poles, 
they only, there's just like a small section on the front that they can adhere to and then the rest is closed. But the con of having all this surface area on the wire poles is that obviously they're gonna lose moisture faster because there's so much exposed to air. Um, so yeah, I am aware of that, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna see how it goes. And I did make a list, so I'm just gonna quick look at that. This is just my spring to-do list. This is a continuation of my spring plant prep. Um, so in the last episode, if you haven't seen that yet, we chopped plants and also restarted my medium medium that's been acting up. And then if I scroll down on my list, the plants that I wanna get onto wire poles, Philodendron Viricosum, Philodendron Bromarks Variegata, Jacenia Pothos, and Marble Queen Pothos. And I've actually found another one that I want to get onto a pole today. So let me show you all of my supplies that I've gathered and all of the plants that we are going to be popping onto poles today. All right, so here is the Philodendron Viricosum. I've been rooting this for quite a while now. So it's definitely ready to be potted. I can see some new growth points too. Some of them don't look so great. Like some of the leaves are pretty... Does this have spider mites? No, I don't think so. Oh my gosh, I would... Does it? It like looks sketchy, but I don't actually see any spider mites. This plant is prone. The Viricosum. Oh my gosh, it looks so weird. There's so many little dots, but I don't see... I think I will give this a treatment just in case. I don't know what's going on here, but anyways, my philodendron varicosum, like I said, some of the cuttings don't look great. I saw one that's like, yeah, these ones are like yellow down here. So I'm probably just gonna be selecting the ones that look the best for us to be potting up because there's so many cuttings in here. I don't know why I kept like a million of them. I just don't think I could part with them at the time, but Today it's just gonna be survival of the fittest. And then the Burl Marks Variegata. Oh, there's actually more cuttings of this. Let me go grab them. Okay, they're right here. So there's this whole container. And again, I don't know if I'm gonna keep, like I'm probably just gonna keep uh, pot up the cuttings that look the best out of these. These were the import ones. And this was the plant that I already had that I chopped and just kept the nice variegated cuttings. Um, so, I am really excited to get that onto a pole because I want to have like a lot, like I want it to be really bushy. And then we have my Jacenia pothos. And this is probably one of the plants that I am the most excited. Ew, uh, oh my gosh, look at that, like fossilized fungus gnat in there. What the heck? That is disturbing. But anyways, the Jacenia pothos is um, one of the plants that I'm the most excited, like out of all my plants, to size up and to see growing on a pole. I've said it before, but my Monstera aurea stresses me out so much. So this is kind of my like substitute for that <laughs> because this gets beautiful yellow variegation. You can't really tell right now because um, it hasn't really put out a new leaf in a while since it's just been in propagation. But when they put out new leaves and they're really fresh, it's a very beautiful yellow variegation. And then it kind of fades down to this like lighter um, variegation. So yeah, I'm so, so excited to watch this grow. I just, I can't wait. And then this is the one that I added onto our list because I was like, you know what? I think it's time to start this guy, um, start sizing this guy up again. And it is my beautiful Philodendron Splendid. Oh my goodness. So if you're new here, hi, hello. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I used to have a quite large Philodendron Splendid. It was like taller than me, I think, or almost as tall as me and beautiful. And unfortunately it came down with a nasty case of thrips. So I had to cut the entire plant up and just keep some um, well, I have to throw the entire plant away and just keep some wet sticks. So I've grown this back from those wet sticks. There's two plants in here. And then I actually have another one that I'm going to be potting together. I thought I lost it for a second. That was alarming, um, but I found it. Oh my goodness. They both have these beautiful, fresh new leaves. Look at that. There's two plants in this one as well. So I'm going to have four plants or four vines growing up the pole. But oh my goodness, I love this blended so much. I love you. And I'm so glad that you're back. I'm gonna take care of you, little baby. Oh, shoot. I just realized I forgot to grab another bag of Molly's mix when I was downstairs. I'll have to go back down. Um, but the last plant that we're gonna be putting on a pole today is going to be my Marble Queen Pothos, which I'm kind of just doing for funsies. I'm just kind of curious about how it's gonna go. 
if you watch plants by melissa she has she has just incredible um i feel like i've been talking about her a lot lately but like honestly plant goals but she has a big marble queen pothos climbing up a moss pole and it just looks so good and she's always talking about how much she enjoys it and how it's like one of her favorite moss pole plants ever so i'm like you know what my marble queen pothos is probably the most well one of the most sentimental plants in my whole collection because it's my oldest plant i've had it for like over 10 years um and it's just growing in my bedroom like the mother plant to this right now but i just thought it would be fun to see greta climbing and to see if she can get big like how cool would that be so i thought that that would just be something neat to try out um so is that it Oh, there's more that I, oh, there's one more that I want to do, but I just can't bring myself to cut off another piece of wire. My hand is like cramped up from that, which brings me into the supplies. Um, so obviously we're going to need some sphagnum moss. I'm also going to need some pots because we're obviously going to be repotting these all with the pole. Um, this is my wire mesh. I don't have the roll up here because it's in the basement and it's massive. I ordered this like the most, the largest roll of wire mesh known to man um, around Christmas time because it was the only option that came in like the dimensions that I wanted. So I ordered that one. So now I have this massive roll and I couldn't even carry it back up here. I just had to go down there and cut off pieces. So um, I have five different pieces because I think we have five plants to do. Is there only four? No, five. So I have five like pieces like this that I've already pre-measured and cut and everything. Um, I'll link this wire mesh, the one that I got. It's just from Amazon. Um, it is like a massive roll, but I think that we are probably going to use it when we put up a fence around the garden as well. So I'm sure it'll get used for like whether moss poles or like just like yard projects. At, at one point or another. For the diameter, I cut 15 squares and I think that that is a pretty good size. Um, also, I'll link my wire cutters, like just in case anybody's also getting into wire poles, um, I'll link the wire cutters that I got because I had to wait for them for a couple of days in the mail, but I was going to, I wanted to do this last week and then I realized that the wire cutters that I had didn't work to cut this kind of mesh. Oh my gosh, my kitchen's messy, sorry. The wire cutters that I had didn't work with this. So um, I looked online at like my local hardware store because I was like, I'll just run out there and grab a pair. And tell me why some of these pairs of wire cutters are literally like $100. I was like, no thank you. Um, so I looked on Amazon and I found a pair for $17 and I ordered them and they worked, they worked great to cut this. So yeah, I'll link those down below if you are looking for a pair for yourself. But um, yeah, it, it was tedious to cut this, but like they worked great. Also have some black zip ties. These are pretty small. I maybe should have ordered them to be a little bit bigger. Hopefully these aren't too difficult to work with. But yeah, I've got these for now. And what else? I've got some scissors to cut the zip ties. Um, and then I just need my potting mix, which I'm gonna use my Molly's mix. So I am going to pop downstairs. Actually, no, let's make the poles first and then I'll do that. I'm literally just gonna fill these with moss and then zip tie them together. I need to figure out what size of pot that I wanna use as well. So I'm thinking, I wonder if this is gonna be too small. Actually, that might be perfect. Jeez, maybe I should have ordered more of these in my last, I just <laughs> got a new order, uh, an order of new pots. Let's see, oh my gosh. Yeah, this is like so much more stiff than the plastic I was using before. So let's just get like an idea of how much space. Okay, yeah, I think that that's honestly gonna be perfect. Could I even go smaller? I don't wanna go too small, obviously, but like I could go smaller, I could. Hmm, I'm just trying to get an idea so I know where to stop putting the moss, which I think will be here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine squares I'm gonna leave empty. Okay, I'm just gonna do this on the floor. I feel like that's gonna be easiest. So I'm just gonna fill it with sphagnum moss. Pretty straightforward. I will just um, fast forward you through this part. So this was my very first attempt and I definitely 
learned from mistakes that I made. So we started off fine, just filling the pool up with some moss. Um, takes a little bit of kind of practice to um, to learn how much moss you need to put in. This is where I made my first, where I realized my first mistake. So there's sharp wire bits sticking out after you cut the wire and I should have bent this in before I filled it with moss but I didn't so I had to awkwardly do it like this. I'm using a different pair of wire cutters that I have. These are the wire cutters that I use for making trellises but they have like a flat um, bit that made it really easy to bend the wire in. Anyways, very tedious to do this for multiple poles. And then this was another big mistake that I made, getting too small of zip ties. <laughs> it was so hard to get, especially the first one in the middle. I had to squeeze the wire so hard to get it close enough so that I could get those tiny zip ties on. So definitely don't recommend. Once you have like the first one to three on the pole, then it's much easier to, like the small ones are fine for like filling in um the other squares but yeah for like the main first zip ties that you put on definitely larger ones would be so much better and then as you can see the pole just looks kind of like teardrop shaped like it's not round at all and i was kind of worried at this point like how do people get theirs looking so round and this is something that i'll talk about later in the video as well um but yeah i'm removing the zip ties and then i had to kind of squish it down with my hands which if you're gonna do this be very careful because i definitely got pinched and yeah it's kind of painful like pushing on the wire so i don't recommend doing that but yeah and then i was just um flipping the zip ties in so there wasn't like sharp bits sticking out this has definitely been an interesting learning experience so far and yeah as you can see I was not very impressed with my handiwork. <laughs> Okay, so this is attempt number three, and I've definitely made some improvements by this point. As you can see, I'm bending in the sharp parts of the wire before I fill it with moss. And um, it's easy to do, but it is very tedious. But I definitely think it's important because I, I mean, the main reason is just like safety for people and pets being around the moss poles. I don't want anything sharp sticking out. But also for the plants, I don't want any leaves to get snagged or anything like that. Now I'm just filling it up with moss, which is definitely the easiest part of this whole process. And then when I go to close it up, I attempted to use my small zip tie again because it's black and it looks nicer. But I did find some white, um, larger zip ties downstairs, so I just went ahead and used that in the middle. I'm just gonna have to live with having that one there, even though it doesn't look the sleekest. Um, and then I went in with black, the small black zip ties for the rest of it, because like I said, once you have that middle part closed up, it's definitely much easier to work with the zip ties. But yeah, I'll definitely be buying larger black zip ties whenever I'm through with these small ones. And then when I was squishing it down, I was using my knee, as you can see, because I was scared of this pinching me because it already had hurt my hands so much. So <laughs> yeah, just trying to get it all shaped nicely. And then as I was flipping the zip ties around, <laughs> I lost a chunk of my nail polish. So yeah, very fun times making these moss poles. Oh my goodness, you guys. I've officially found my new least favorite plant chore because what the heck was that? <laughs> I've heard people say that they don't like wire poles because they hurt your hands to make. And I thought maybe people were just being dramatic, but no. I've made three and that's, I'm done. I'm done for today. That's, that's it. There they are right there. 
Um, yeah, and not only is that so tedious, like bending all the wire and everything, but it's so painful. I pinched myself. I busted my nail polish off of that nail and that, I feel like I have carpal tunnel now. Like respect to y'all who make these because it is not for the faint of heart. I don't mind if something takes some elbow grease to get done, but I just feel like I'm not super thrilled with the results. Can somebody please tell me how people get these to be round? Am I doing something wrong? Is it this particular wire that I have? I don't know. It's so hard to bend into like a perfectly round shape or are people's just not perfectly round? I don't know. I'm just worried that they're not gonna be super stable if they're not um, like, you know, uniform. But like, I don't know if you can tell. I mean, it's fine and it stands up on its own and everything. So it's fine, but I just like, I don't know what the secret is <laughs> to getting these nice and round. So if you have any tips, let me know. But so far, am I sold on this over something like my Rousseau poles? No. <laughs> and if you don't wanna have to deal with all of these extra steps, honestly, I would just go with the Rousseau poles. So yeah, we'll see how my feelings um, progress <laughs> as I use these over however long um, I'm gonna give them you know a good solid try so yeah but am I kind of surprised at how annoying that was and and how they're just like not really how I expected them to come out yes anyways um, that took much longer than I thought it was going to and now we only have three which means I can only pot up three plants so I'm gonna pick the three that I'm gonna do and then we'll get them potted and get the pole in there and everything. And yeah, that will be exciting to actually have them potted with a plant. Okay, like I said, using my Molly's mix. It's a new bag, let's open this up. Oh, that was not very successful. Okay, I'll go get the scissors. <laughs> I'm being tested today. The first plant that I'm gonna work with is, I think gonna be my Jacinia pothos, just because I said that this is the one that I'm probably most excited about. So I wanna make sure that I get that one on a pole today. So let me take a look here. I don't even know how many cuttings we have or anything. Oh, there's little baby new leaves in there. That's so cute. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, oh, five, I think. One, two, one, two, three, four, I think there's five cuttings in here. So I honestly might want to opt for the six inch for this one, just so that there's enough room for all of those roots. So yeah, that should be a good size. Okay, so I just have to fill this bottom part up with the mix. The potting mix. Ow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Send help, you guys. <laughs> okay. Why do I not have a potting mat today? Couldn't tell ya. Couldn't tell ya. <laughs> uh, okay. So, let's get it in. Now, I was gonna put it in the middle, but I think I'm gonna scooch it back a little bit because I'm gonna want the majority of the vines to be facing the same way, right? All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of mix in here and I'm hoping that this will just be able to stand up by itself while I get the cutting sorted out. So we'll see here. Okay, let's see if that will stay. It will, so that's good. 
Now I'm gonna pull these out. Actually, I'm just gonna go straight from the cup to the pot. Oh my gosh, that one just has tiny roots. Okay, I don't even know if that one's gonna... Honestly, I might pin these on while I arrange them. I think there might be six cuttings in here, actually. I'm gonna try the pinning on method. So I'm just gonna kind of attach this with a little greening pin for a moment. And I'll grab another cutting here. Maybe I'm just gonna choose the biggest ones from here actually. I don't know if I want like six vines. I think that that's too much. I usually just like having three on a moss pole. This one is a beautiful one though. Nice big vine on there already. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, let's stick that in there. So we're for sure gonna have that one. And this one, hmm, okay. I'm gonna take off this tiny one that I put on and instead I'm gonna put this one because it's just a little bit bigger. I'll try to position this so that I can show you a little bit better, but I'm just sticking, like I can see what side of the vines the roots are coming out on, so I'm just sticking that against the pole. They're just kind of floating there at the minute because I have to fill it up still. Should I do those three? Should I? There was another good one in here, this one. Hmm. That one has really good roots. Look at that, look at those. Really good. Okay, I'm gonna take out the other small one. This one, sorry. And replace it with this. I feel like these are the three strongest cuttings. I have to figure out which way this is gonna go this way, I think. I feel like these are the three strongest cuttings, so. Wait, is that upside down? Does it go like this? No, that can't be right. I've made the mistake of potting pothos upside down before, so <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if I did it again, honestly. Okay, I'm gonna try to pin this on again. Put it right there, I guess. That's not even gonna stay because there's no moss there. Shoot, okay, maybe I'll just very carefully have to... Um, this one might stay. Kind of, but not really. I'm just gonna start filling it up carefully. Carefully, carefully, carefully. Okay, y'all, I think that these are potted up well enough. The leaves are facing the wrong way, but I had to put them that way because that's the side of the vine that was rooting. So eventually the leaves will face out if I have the light in front of it, which I will, of course, because I want the leaves to face out, but it's just gonna look like this for now. The window must have been facing. I should have flipped it around um, the way it was sitting in the window, but it's just gonna be like this for a little bit and obviously it isn't vined enough to actually put it on um, to attach it to the pole or anything, but eventually, you know, it will grow and we'll be able to do that. It's ideal to start plants on poles, any kind of pole when they're small anyway. So I'm starting it on here at the right time, even though this seems massive, this pole, it will grow into it. So yeah, that's the Jacenia all done. <laughs> looking kind of crazy but it's fine and i will um do the other two now
Okay, next I'm gonna do the Philodendron Splendids. And I'm gonna do the six inch pot for these guys as well. Ooh, I also have to unpot these. So I'm probably gonna reuse this mix that they're in because um, although, should I? I definitely don't think it's as good as the Molly's. It's a DIY mix, but it doesn't even look like a really good DIY mix that I made. I kind of want to switch them into the Molly's. I think I'm gonna. I'll maybe keep this and reuse it for a different plant. Um, that I don't really think is gonna mind it, but I feel like these are gonna thrive in the mollies. Like they aren't even very rooted in this one. Hmm. All right, so we have four plants, like I said, and our pole right here. gonna do it really quickly I will say after doing that first one I feel like maybe I'm just being too picky with wanting the poles to be perfectly round maybe they just aren't perfectly round and nobody really says anything or like you can't tell from online I don't know I just was worried that mine was kind of wonky but it seems really sturdy and stable in there so maybe it's fine Maybe it's fine, who knows. I do worry about extending it though. Like, I feel it, for it to like fit nicely and to not be weird, I feel like you kind of want it, would want them to be nice and round, but I don't know. these babies in do I want to do I don't know why I'm so fixated on having three I for sure want that one so cute and then I for sure want this one because these are the two biggest like strongest plants wrong way I think I'm gonna want it that way Part of this vine is like weird. It's fine, I think. Oh. Okay, and then I think maybe I'll choose one more. And then maybe I'll just keep the extra one. Okay, let's do this one because it has two leaves rather than one. Keep this one. Pop it right in the middle here. So cute. And then this one, I'm just gonna pot back in, just like literally stick it back into there and just keep it as a backup, just just in case something happens because I would be so mad if something happened to my philodendron splendid and I didn't have a backup. Although I'm sure I'd always be able to like save the wet stick or something. I mean, I shouldn't say that. Maybe one day I wouldn't be able to. Maybe it would just completely rot. Yeah, you never know, better safe than sorry. All right, so. Let's just fill this up now. I always feel like I need to stand up when I'm repotting. It's easier. Okay, I think that that is all good. So again, they're too small to actually secure to the pole, but whenever they're big enough, oh my gosh, somehow my... I must have scooped that up from on the table from earlier. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, once it's big enough, you know, maybe one or two more leaves, I will be able to fasten this onto the pole and I cannot wait for that. So yeah, again, like it seems pretty sturdy, even though it's not perfectly round. So let me know, like, yeah, if you do poles like this, let me know if yours are kind of misshapen <laughs> or not, if you found that to be a problem. Anyways, Splendid is all done. Oh, the new leaves are just so pretty on this thing. Okay, and then lastly, I'm making a big mess here, but lastly, I think that I'm gonna go ahead and do Philodendron Viricosum. So, 
Um, okay, let's get the pole set up first. I'm nervous about this one. I don't know why. Oh, okay, literally. Oh my gosh, I do. <gasps> I kept thinking it feels like I have a sliver. Oh, that's literally the back. Okay, there we go. Okay, the pot is prepared. So now I have to pick out which cuttings I'm gonna use. So, oh my goodness. I guess I'm just gonna pull them all out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The way that they have just conformed to the shape of this prop vessel. Look at that. <laughs> my so narrow. Oh my goodness. Okay, I guess I'm just making a big mess here. It's fine because I'm almost done. <sighs> oh my goodness, a couple of them are actually trying to push leaves. Okay, I think I'm gonna pick those ones then. It's so cute. Okay. Oh my goodness, to untangle this. Yikes. I think this is the one that I want. Oh shoot, is the actual leaf? Oh no. I thought the like mother leaf on this one was dead. I was like, no. Wait, is it? No. Oh my gosh, it is, it's the yellow one. Cute. This is the one I wanted because it's starting to push out a leaf, but that's the one with the yellow mother leaf. Shoot. I'm not sure what to do in that case. I'm gonna set that to the side and see what else I can find here. Okay, let's do the opposite route and find a mother leaf that looks really good. This one is really nice and dark and velvety looking, but that has a small <laughs> dinky little root system. It is pretty though. Hmm. I don't think they've been enjoying living right above the baseboard heater, to be honest. I think that's why a lot of these are not looking great. This one's nice, but it's small. I tried to check it out anyways. Doesn't even have a growth point activated or anything. There's a little growth point, but yeah, a lot of them have already started to like, you know, push out the little vine part like this. And I kind of want one that has that. Yeah. Hmm, 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 hmm. Is this one yellow? Yeah, this one's pretty yellow too. Dang. Okay, maybe I will just go. Oh, oh no, no, no. Oh, this one's so cute. <laughs> it's so little. Oh shoot, is my TV being a pain in the butt? Okay, I think I'm gonna go with these three. They all have some sort of little vine or about to put a leaf out even though this one is kind of yellow i'm confident that we're gonna get a new leaf from that one anyways so i'm just trying to play the long game here you know and choose the ones that i think are going to do the best in the future so let's just stick these in Okay, I think that that is pretty good. Again, just looking cra- Oh shoot, this one's really crooked. Oh shoot. Okay, I'm gonna try to remedy that. 
What the heck? There, that's better. The other two are pretty straight. Okay, that's better. Yes, so looking crazy right now, but we're playing the long game here, like I said. And it's kind of fun that we've been doing more like repotting and getting plants on poles and doing different projects because it's just fun to have things to update y'all on. Um, like within the next few months, hopefully we're gonna see some really nice growth on this. And it's just exciting when we do this together, get them all set up and then to watch, you know, the fruits of our labor occur. Yeah, so I can't wait um, for the future to show you guys these plants. Anyways, we're all done. That was quite the journey, I must say. I did not think that this was gonna take me two, well, two hours. Yeah, I did some of the prep before. It would be in total like two and a half hours. And of course it takes longer to film things because I'm setting up the camera and I'm talking to you and everything. But yeah, that was, um, that was a lot of work. Again, let me know what your experience is with these poles. If you've made wired poles before, I am genuinely so curious to hear. So leave me a comment down below um, or leave me a comment down below regarding anything in this video, any thoughts or questions or anything. I always have everything that I link um, in the description box. So make sure you check there. I have, you know, the pots, the potting mix. I'll put the wire mesh, the wire cutters, just anything I can think of that I use, as well as a list of just my favorite products in general, my Amazon storefront and everything. All right. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.